worse than that, Lord. <laughs> We're going to give you a sandwich, Lord. All right. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it, church? Amen. 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 I'm going to sing one real quick here. I've sung this a few times, if you remember. Sing with me if you can. Amen. No, it was a blood. No, it was a blood. No, it was a blood for me. Where well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross. No, it was a blood for me. Yes, salvation in the blood. Salvation in the blood. Salvation in the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross. The blood for me Pierced him in his side Pierced him in his side Pierced him in the side for me Well, one day when I was lost Jesus died upon that cross Pierced him in the side for me No, it was the blood No, it was the blood the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus went upon that cross. So it was the blood for me. It's coming back for me. It's coming back for me. It's coming back for me again. blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus went upon that cross. No, oh, it was a blood for me. No, oh, it was a blood for me. Yes, I know it was a blood for me. No, oh, it was a blood for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Church, I have an unusual message tonight. Amen. I mean, you know, sometimes I can have some, the Lord gives me some unusual messages, I believe. This is, this is one of them. Get a microphone close to you. Get a microphone close to me? How's that? Because I can't hear you. Better? Can you hear it? Okay. All right, we're going we're gonna to be in Job tonight, church. We're going to be in Job. Amen. And I, I entitled this message, Unicorns. Ostriches and horses. Amen. Unicorn, ostriches, and horses. Amen. You know, uh, Job, he, he got in the fix that he was in. He started wondering about life. Amen. Have you ever been down in, in the dumps and things that are not, not going right and you start wondering about life? Amen. I, I always like to say Job was broke, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> amen. And I've been there in my life. Amen. And Job's so-called friends come along, and they had all the answers for Job, didn't they? <laughs> Amen. But they didn't really, did they? They thought they did. They thought they had all the answers for Job. But God in heaven, he's sitting, and he listened to Job, and then he sitting and listened to Job's three friends, and he answers them. Amen. He starts answering them in Job 38. We're going to start in Job 38, the first three verses. And the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Amen. So what was God saying? You're speaking words, but you don't have no knowledge behind what you're saying. Gird up now thy loins like a man, and I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Amen. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth, declared if thou hast understanding? Amen. So Job speaks, his friend speaks, amen. 
But God speaks out of the world when he says, give me some answers to my questions. And amen. And what does he basically tell them? God's telling them, shut up and listen to what I have to say and listen to my questions. Amen. But we, we, we go over to the 39th uh, chapter. We see a very unusual chapter. We see God starts naming all these animals. And if you look at these animals, God, God gives all these characteristics of these animals. And if you look at these animals, you start seeing characteristics of men in these animals. Amen. And uh, in the first first eight verses, it talks about goats and donkeys. Amen. And it talks about how uh, goats and, and donkeys can be stubborn. Amen. They're stiff-willed. And uh, amen. They like to be loners out on their own and not be part of the part of the group. So in that, can you see, amen, that how that can represent people, amen? Because amen, how many know that people can be stubborn, amen? People can be stiff-willed, amen, and they can they can be lone Christians and they want to be out on their own and not in the church where they belong, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to start out in Job 39 in, in the ninth verse through the twelfth, amen. And uh, not Job 39. 9 through 12, it says, Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or buy by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harl, harrow the valley after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great, or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barns? Amen. So now, you know, when we think of a unicorn, in, uh, in society, in, in the West, we, when we think of a unicorn, we think of this little horse, white horse with a horn and wings, right? <laughs> but that's, if you if you just do a little bit of Bible study, you'll see that's not a unicorn in the Bible. Amen. In, in, in the Bible, when it really speaks of a unicorn, it's like an ox. Big, strong ox with one horn, amen. So it's a big animal. It's a big animal. It has lots of strength, Amen. And it's not, it's not what we would call a pegasus, okay? Because that little white horse thing with the wings and the horn, that's not a unicorn, that's a pegasus, amen? At least it's not what the Bible calls a unicorn, amen? Uh, Numbers 23 says that the unicorns are very strong animals, amen? Psalms 92 says that the horn is the glory of, of the unicorn. Psalms 29 says that they skip like young, young, young cats. Amen. In other words, what, the, what does it say? They're, they have pee and vinegar in them. Amen. Just like you ever, if you've ever seen a little calf or a little, a little baby kid or a little kid goat or something, you, you put it out and let it run. What does it do? It jumps, skips, and runs around. Amen. So if you can imagine this big, strong, one-horned ox, ox, amen, jumping and skipping around. Amen. And uh, it says in uh, Isaiah 47 that, that the unicorns like to hang out with other cattle. They flock together, amen. So, so uh, you know, I, I, in, this, in this message, I'm trying to relate these animals to humans, amen, to the characteristics of humans, certain types of individuals, amen. But we, you know, when, it, when we're, we start here in verse 9, it says, Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib, Amen. So what is the scripture saying? You can't keep a uniform in a stall. Amen. It won't stay because it has its own will. It's stubborn, ain't it? Amen. And God says that, tells us, to, he says, to rest in us. Amen. It says, to rest in me. Amen. But what does the unicorn say? It says, I, I know the, what my way is better. I know my own way. Amen. And that's how we can be as people, can't we? We can be stubborn. God says, take rest in me. And what do we want to do? We want to run off and do our own thing, don't we? Amen. Amen. Verse 10 says, canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Or will he harrow the valley after thee? Amen. So you can't plow a field with a unicorn. Amen. Now you can take a team of ox and you can hook them up to a plow and you can go plow that field and they'll listen to you and you can, they'll obey you. Amen. But it says here in this verse that you can't put a plow up to a, a unicorn and, and make a furrow. Amen. Because it ain't going to listen. It's stubborn and it's mule headed. Amen. But what did Jesus say? He said, put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Amen. Amen. But the unicorn thinks that he knows better than God. <laughs> Amen. So people that have that personality, they're stubborn and mule-headed, and they think they know better than God. Verse 11 says, Wilt thou trust him because of his strength is so great? Amen. Or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? So amen. So what is, what's the next thing about a unicorn? You can't trust a unicorn. Amen. You can't trust a unicorn. Amen. Uh, you know, I'm cattle. I raise cattle. And the golden rule of cattle farmers is never turn your back on a head of cattle. Amen? Because once you turn your head that one time, they'll turn on you and trample you. 
You can almost count on it, amen. In fact, cattle kill and maim more people than any other animal, amen, than any other animal, hands down. Cattle, if you turn your back to them, you never want to turn your head back to a head of cattle, amen, because they'll just have a bad day and then they will trample you, amen. So you can't trust cattle, amen, and you can't trust a unicorn, amen. And how many know you can't trust everybody you meet, and that includes Christians sometimes? Amen. 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 you got to use some wisdom and discernment, amen. Amen. You turn your back on them for just a minute, and you get a knife in your back, amen. Have you ever been to church? I bet you a lot of you have, amen. Verse 12 says, Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barns? Amen. A unicorn will lie to you. Amen. Pastor, I'm going to lie and witness. I'm going to be a faithful uh, worker. Amen. And I ain't going to miss a service ever. <laughs> oh, boy. If you hear that, you can count on that not to come true. Amen. You know what Jesus said? Pray that the Lord send workers to the harvest. Amen. Because the fields are ripe to harvest. Amen. But the workers are few. Amen. But a, a unicorn will lie to you. Amen. He'll lie to you. And it might be good intention. Amen. But it's still a lie. Amen. And so if you meet somebody that, that, that has the characteristics of a unicorn, amen, they're stubborn and they won't listen, amen. So when I, when I go through this list and see if you've ever met somebody like this, they won't work, amen, even though they're gifted in abundance, amen. The unicorn has a lot of strength and he's able to pull the plow, amen, but you don't want to do it, amen. Have you ever met a Christian like that? You know that the God has gifted them in many, many different ways, but they won't use none of the gifts that God has given to them, amen. That's a unicorn. They're untrustworthy, they lie, and they won't listen. Amen. That's the unicorn. We're going to move on to the next one, which is ostrich. And that's Job uh, 39, 13 through 18. Amen. It says, Giveth thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in the dust, and forgiveth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. Because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted into her understanding. What time she lifted herself up on high and scorneth the horse and his rider. Amen. So the ostrich. And ostrich, you know what? In verse 13 here it says, Giveth thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feather unto the ostriches. So what? Does the wings of a peacock and the wings of an ostrich have in common? And you could even say the turkey in this case. What do they do? They do this. <laughs> Have you ever seen an ostrich strut like that? And what does a peacock do? Pulls all them feathers up. Look at me. I'm big and special. <laughs> Amen. They have pride, don't they? In there. Amen. They're, pr they're prideful. Amen. And uh, how many know that's not what God wants? Amen. But so if someone that has the personality of an ostrich, they're prideful and boastful, amen. Uh, verse 14 says, Which leave her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in dust, amen. You know, an ostrich will start, will burst something, and they won't finish it, amen. Uh, you know, what happens to an ostrich when an ostrich lays its eggs in the dirt and just abandons them and leaves them, and don't care for them? And they don't, you know, they, they could get stepped on, they could get ate, and the ostriches just don't care. They just leave their eggs and abandon them, amen? Amen. So in other words, an ostrich bursts something, they start something, and they don't finish it, amen? You don't see it through the end, amen? Amen. An ostrich receives the word with gladness, amen, as it says in the scripture, and then he forgets what they have birthed, amen? And they don't continue. They continue, they, they continue for a little while, amen, in the word in Christ, and then they fall away. Amen. It also says that the, the ostrich is earthly minded. Amen. It's earthly minded. So it takes what it's birth and it just leaves it. Amen. It leaves it to the world and, and you know, for it to fend for itself. Amen. How I many know that's a bad idea? Amen. If you birth something, you should see it to its, to, to its end, shouldn't you? Amen. Remember that, that, you know, the Bible says that, you know, don't throw your pearls to the swine. Why? Because they'll trample it. Amen. They'll trample it. Don't give that what's holy. Amen. To the hogs. Amen. And to the dogs. Verse 15 says, And he and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. Amen. Ostriches are forgetful. Amen. Ostriches are forgetful. So, amen. How many times have you seen someone they get saved? 
Amen. And they, they really, they rejoice in their salvation. Amen. And a year later, they're in bitterness. <laughs> Amen. They've forgotten what has been given to them. Amen. They've forgotten what's happened to them in the past. They've forgotten the goodness of the Lord, and now they're in bitterness. Amen. And that's an ostrich. An ostrich. And I'm going to turn briefly to Isaiah 49. Uh, in verse 15 and 16, it says, Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven upon the palm. Oh, that's it, verse 15. Okay, so what is it saying there, amen, in Isaiah? It's saying that, you know, can a woman forget the child that they birthed? Amen. But he says, boy, sure, an ostrich sure can, Amen. And uh, I don't know if any of you was following, but in the news there was a man that just arrested in Jackson County. I believe it was the FBI and the sheriff's department had a sting on him. But he was going around and, and trading drugs for people's children. Amen. And the parents were just letting them do whatever they wanted to, and, the, and they finally caught up to him, thank God. Now, let me know, when you burst something, amen, you got to see it to the end. And whether it's children or it's your relationship with God, amen, you got to see it to the end, don't you, amen? And you got to see it to the end. Amen. You, you, you got to be heavenly minded and not earthly minded. Amen. Verse 16 says that she is, she speaking of the, the uh, ostrich, is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers, and her labor is in vain without fear. So they have no fear of the Lord. Amen. They, they, the ostrich lays her eggs and they have no fear of the Lord. If they had fear of the Lord, they'd take care of what they'd started, wouldn't they? Amen. Amen. Verse 7, he says, because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. Amen. So an ostrich has no wisdom and very little understanding. Amen. And I may know, church, that it's a sad fact that most Christians that lack wisdom and understanding do it by their own account. Amen. Why? Because what does God say is if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally. Amen. Amen. So if you lack wisdom, all you got to do is ask God to study the Bible and he'll give it to you. Amen. Verse 18 says, What time she lifted up herself on high, she scorned the horse and the rider. Amen. Now, that's kind of kind of a peculiar passage there. Amen. But what is it? You know, when an ostrich sees somebody that, that has wisdom, amen, and when the ostrich sees somebody that's walking with the Lord and, and, and they're right with them, what do they do? They mock them. They're mockers. Amen. They're mockers. So somebody that has the, the spirit of, a, of, a, of an ostrich, amen, they mock people that are, that are right with the Lord. Amen. Why? Because they themselves ain't right. If they was... They would mock them. Amen. So we look back at the ostrich. Amen. And ostrich, see, and see if you can see this in people that you've ever seen or even yourself when you were younger. Amen. Ostriches are prideful. Amen. They start things, but they won't finish them. Amen. They're covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. Amen. They're earthly minded. They don't have no fear of the Lord. They lack wisdom and understanding. And they're mockers. Amen. They're mockers. Now we get to what I, what I, what I really enjoyed about this message, amen, is the horse, the horse. Uh, amen, now you want to be a horse according to this the verses here, amen. Ver, uh, verse 19 to 25 speaks of the horse. Now we've already seen that the ostrich mocks the horse, don't it? Amen. 19 to 25 says, Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou closed his neck with thunder? Hast thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paweth in the valley, and he reigneth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear, and is not affrighted, and neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, and the glittering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believeth he that he that it is the sound of the trumpet. Amen. He saith among the trump, trump, trumpets, Ha, ha! And he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and of the shoutings. Amen. Okay, so verse 19, it says, Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou closed his neck with thunder? I mean, this is, remember, this is God asking uh, Job and his three friends, amen. But the first thing that we see about the horse is that it has strength, amen. And as a Christian, and if you're right with the Lord, you should have strength. You should have spiritual strength, amen. shouldn't you, amen? That's right. Amen. How many knows that you don't only have strength, but you have controlled strength because the Lord controls you as a Christian, amen. And when, when the Lord pulls on your reins, you respond, don't you? Amen. Yes. And it talks about it, the the horse that moves its neck, amen, and it starts to charge. And when it does, the enemy fears, amen. 
I mean, oh, as Christians, the enemy should fear you. Amen. He should fear you because you have a power and authority. Amen. In the Holy Ghost. Amen. The horse has power. Amen. And the, God has endued the horse with power. Amen. Power in battle. Amen. Power in battle. Verse 20 says, Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. Amen. And, uh, you know, let's, I, I call that leaping horses. Amen. A grasshopper will, will leap and a horse will leap. And, what, and when a horse leaps, usually what it's doing is trampling something. Amen. It's trampling something under its feet, ain't it? It's trampling the enemy. Amen. And the sound that it makes when it tramples something is terrifying. Have you ever heard a, a horse mad? It, you know, horses are like any other animal. They, they, they make vocalizations, and some are, are different than others, amen. But, but, you know, they have a, you can, it's just like a child. When you were raising your child when they were little, you, you could tell by the cry what was going on. It was, I'm a mad cry, or it's, I'm really seriously hurt, mom cry, or it's, I'm just not getting my way, pouty kind of cry, amen. And animals are the same way, amen. But when a horse, it, it's mad, and it goes on to attack, it's going to trample someone. It makes a noise, amen. And it's a very distinctive noise. And it terrorizes the enemy, amen. But what does the, and you see the symbology there in the scriptures, because what does the scripture tell us? Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, amen. And what do you, how do you do when you tread on something? You stamp it under your feet, don't you? I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, amen. And the words that you speak cause demons to tremble, amen. They speak, they cause the demons to tremble. 21 says, He paweth in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. Amen. The horse runs to the enemy. Amen. It don't run from the enemy. It runs to the enemy. Amen. He knows that the enemy's coming. And he falls in the valley. Amen. And so in his hard times, when you're in the valley, amen, and struggles and strife is coming, amen, you don't run from the valley, do you? Amen. You, you, you run into the battle and fight the enemy, amen, so that you can get out of the battle. But even, and even though you know the enemy attack is coming, you run to it. And that's what the horse does. He confidently rides in the battle. Amen. Verse 22 says, He mocked at fear, mocketh at fear, and is not affrighted. Neither turneth he back from the sword. Amen. So a horse does not fear the devil. Amen. A horse does not fear the devil. He laughs at the enemy's fear. Amen. And he doesn't retreat. 23 says, The quiver rattleth against him, and the glittering spear and the shield. Amen. So uh, the person that, that is equipped as a horse is equipped for battle, amen. They have weapons of their warfare. And the scripture says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, amen, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds, amen. Verse 24 says, He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage. Neither believeth he that it is the sound of the trumpet, amen. So he runs in the, again, the horse runs in the battle, amen. And how many know that the Christian life is a life of warfare, amen? And so when when he when the horse hears the trumpet sound, amen, the horse runs into the battle swiftly, amen, he runs into the battle swiftly. And it says the scripture gives a symbology here, he swallowed the ground with fierceness and rage, amen. So, you know, as Christians, when, when the enemy attacks us, we should have the end, we should have that attitude of how dare you attack me, amen. You should take that, that's the attitude you should have, you know, you should be angry with the devil in a, when it attacks you, amen. Because, you know, you, you, you have authority to fight them devils, and you don't have to be, amen, uh, rolled over, amen, by a devil. You don't have to be, amen. So he, it says that he swallowed the ground with fierceness and rage, amen. And then how many know we don't take devils prisoner? One of the craziest things that I've seen uh, Christians do is they, they, they play little games with devils, <laughs> Amen. If you're being oppressed by a devil, don't play games with the devil, amen. Just cast it out and get rid of it, amen. Because if you play with the devil, before you know it, there's going to be seven more on your back. Amen, because that's how it works, amen. You don't play with devils, you just pierce them with the sword of the spirit, amen, which is the word of God, don't you, amen. You don't take prisoners. And you don't allow them to hang around, amen. Once you know it's wrong, and you got to get rid of it, you get rid of whatever that evil is. Amen. Get it out of your life, amen. 25 says, He saith among the trumpets, Ha, ha! And he smelt the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and of the shoutings. Amen. So, the horse smells the battle. Have you ever heard that symbology before? So, they, oh, I can smell the battle. Amen. So, what is it saying? Amen. The, the, the trumpet sounds, and they can smell the battle coming. Amen. A Christian, if, if they've walked in maturity for a little while, they can see the <coughs> devil coming a mile away. 
They know the attack's coming, and they know exactly what the devil's doing, and they laugh. Ha, ha, ha. I see you, devil. I see your tricks. You've done this to me a thousand times before. You're just trying to do it again. Amen. And so they smell that battle coming. Amen. And even though, even, even, even if it's a captain or a demonic prince, amen, amen, they still smell that battle, and they go into battle. Amen. They thunder and shout at the ho at, as the horse, amen. But the horse laughs at the, the demonic ignorance, amen, of, of demons. You know, how many know that that uh, a demon will put up a good front, amen, and he'll try everything to get you to fear it. But once it realizes that you don't fear it no more, then it knows it's in trouble, amen. As long as a demon, can, as long as you're afraid of a demon, it's got control and power over you, amen. amen. But when you convert and you realize that, you know what, I don't have to put up with that nonsense, then it has no power over you. It's afraid of you then, church, amen. And remember David said to Goliath, he said, you come at me with a sword and a spear, amen, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts, amen. And, uh, here's another one that I like. You know, people as hawks and eagles. Amen, you know, often in the Bible, Christians are, are compared to eagles, amen. We're going to read. Uh, 26 to 30. It says, Doth the hawk fly by thy wisdom, and stretch her wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up at thy command, and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, in a strong place. From hence she seeketh the prey, and her eyes behold far off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain there is, there she is. Amen. So the hawk flies by God's wisdom. Amen. And a Christian flies by God's wisdom. At least we should be. Amen. Verse 27 says, uh, Doth the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? Amen. So how, how many know that the eagle is not controlled by the flesh? It's not controlled by man. Amen. The eagle is controlled by the spirit. Amen. By the spirit of God. And what does it do? It lives in high places. Amen. It lives in high places. Verse 28 says, She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock and the strong places. Amen. So the eagle abides on the rock. Amen. And the, the eagle, the church, Amen. Abides where? Abides on the rock. It abides on Christ, don't it? Amen. We abide in Christ, don't we? Amen. And we abide in, in the rock that's in a high place. Amen. You know, verse 29 and 30 says, From hence she seeketh the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain is, there she is. Amen. How I many know that battlefields are bloody places? Amen. They just are. Amen. And, and Christianity is not for the weak of heart. Amen. Uh, you know, we are to have a warrior mindset as a Christian, amen. It's a battlefield. And it can be a bloody one, amen. Because in your Christian life, no matter how long you, you ultimately are a Christian, whether it's 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 60, 70, 80 years, you're going to see a lot of people fall along the way, amen. You're going to see a lot of demons fall, and you're going to see a lot of people fall, amen. You're going to see a lot, of sh a lot of bloodshed on both ends, amen. And it's a battlefield. But the enemy sees... The, the eagle sees this enemy, amen, because it's in a high place, and it has good vision. It sees that enemy from afar off. And before the enemy can come into its home and its abide, what does it do? It flies and takes off, and it meets the enemy where it's it vanished to the eagle, amen. And what does it say in here? That it, it takes the, the blood, comes back to its little ones, and, it's, and the little ones suck up the blood. So what is it saying there? Amen. The spoils of war, amen. It gathers spoils of war, amen. The eagle gathers the spoils of war, and it's nourished by it, him, and him and the eagle and his children. Amen. You know, Matthew 11, 12 says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Amen. And the violent take it by force. Amen. And you can see that in the eagle. Amen. It suffers violence and it takes it by force. Amen. And that's what we do as Christians. Amen. When demons come against us, amen, we might suffer some violence, but we, we fight back in violence and we take the kingdom of heaven by force. You know, Job and his friends had some stinking thinking. Have you ever heard that term, stinking thinking? Amen, I like that. Job, they had some stinking thinking going on in their mind, and God didn't agree with what they said. So, you know, God could have just struck them with lightning and killed them, but that's not what he did, is it? Amen. What did God do? God said, he said, I want you to listen to these animals. Look how these animals, amen, look how they act. And see if you can see yourself in these animals. Amen. And, uh, or you can see this in, in, in people, amen. And what's the animals that God shows Job and his friends? A stubborn unicorn, amen. Uh, a not-so-bright ostrich, amen. A powerful warrior horse. A high-flying hawk and an eagle, amen. 
And I, you know, I always say, amen, make sure, amen, that you're a hawk, an eagle, and a horse, amen. Not an ostrich and a unicorn, amen. Amen. We want to be, we want to be eagles. We want to be horses. But we don't want to be stubborn. And we want to have wisdom, don't we? Amen, church. I know, I, I don't know how you think, but to me, that was a really strange message. <laughs> when, when I wrote it, I said, Lord, this is a really strange one. Amen. But it's what he gives me, and i got to do what the Lord gives me. Amen. Uh, be in prayer for Ted. Amen. Be in prayer for Ted. And uh, the seniors will be here Saturday. I, I haven't heard anything otherwise, and I'm sure they will be. And it will, regardless of who is or isn't here, amen, uh, service will go on. Amen. Will the whole service be dedicated to the songs, or will the, we have prayer before? Um, as far as I know, we're going to have prayer, and then we'll, we will have a message. Zane is supposed to preach. Uh, he messaged me yesterday and said that he wanted to preach uh, and he's Saturday. Saying afterwards, say an hour after we start or so. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say they'll probably sing at least an hour. And then, you know, Lord willing, if Zane is able to, and I'm sure, I'm sure he will. And I'm sure almost, I, I don't know for sure, but I'd say almost surely they're up at the hospital. And uh, so, you know, you can message Barb uh, if you've got any questions. But definitely be in prayer for Pastor Amen and for Barb because you know she's struggling too. Amen. When your spouse is not in good shape, you struggle, don't you? Amen. We used to have wife service for uh, New Year's Eve. We'd stay until after midnight. And, yeah. Uh, we'd, we'd make I used to do that when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. well, I, think I don't like it so much anymore. I like it was my sleep, amen. I think uh, Pastor Barney's church here in Brighton, I think they had an uh, early Sunday worship on uh, Easter. Yeah. I think they get together early and watch, it, watch the sun come up. Yeah, churches do that. I mean, I've been to sunrise or Easter sunrise services. Anybody else got anything on their minds, on their hearts? Amen. Anybody want prayer? Does anybody have an announcement? Anything they want to say? Anything? Bring a friend. Bring a friend, yeah. But if you know somebody, you know. Uh, Bring somebody with you. And like I said, they're, they'll be here Saturday. Then they'll be at Randy Halls in Wellston on Sunday evening. <coughs> All right. And I know there is some people. I talked to Jeff Seitz um, a couple days ago, and he said, Lord, well, he was going to try to be here. Uh, if he couldn't make it Saturday, then he'd make it to Randy's on Sunday. Amen.